Where teens live, learn, work, and play influences their sexual decision-making, behavior, and risk of teen pregnancy. Many teens live in stressful communities where unemployment may be high, violence and substance use present, and housing conditions poor. However, there are also protective factors, such as goal setting, family, friends, schools, and resources designed to empower teens. While recent data show U.S. teen birth rates are declining, great disparities continue to exist by age, race, socioeconomic status, ethnicity, geographic location, and among vulnerable populations, including youth in foster care, parenting teens, and lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning youth. These disparities indicate more work is needed. Through a partnership with the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Office of Adolescent Health, and Office of Population Affairs, JSI has been working with nine grantees to build their capacities to engage diverse communities in order to deliver effective, culturally competent, community-wide teen pregnancy prevention programs that incorporate teens' perspectives on teen pregnancy. Members of the youth leadership teams based in Hartford, Connecticut, and Springfield and Holyoke, Massachusetts, were interviewed for their take on teen pregnancy, what their communities and families mean to them, challenges they face, recommendations as to how their communities can better support them, and their hopes and dreams. YLT members work to reduce teen pregnancy within their communities by helping their peers to make informed decisions about their reproductive health. Listening to teens talk about the issues they face and what resources are available to them is essential to better understand the factors influencing teen pregnancy in their communities. A supportive community can make a difference. Where youth live, learn, work, and play matters in teen pregnancy prevention. YLT members describe what they like about their communities. When I hear the word community, I think of not only my family, but the people, my neighbors. I think about the parents, the children, school, um, local organizations around where I live at as well. Like the city and family and friends. I live in Hartford, so it depends on what part of town you're in. So I'm from the South End, so the South End is mostly Puerto Ricans, Colombians, Cubans, Dominicans, so it's a very, very big Latino community. I live around a lot of elders, so I have a lot of positive influences surrounding me in my neighborhood. I have members that are old enough to be my parents, but you know, my parents raised me to have respect for them, so they're, they're not blood, but you still love them as like a father or as an uncle. I don't have a reason to be nervous walking home or walking to work. My favorite thing about my community is how like they look out for each other. And even if you don't really know the person, they know your parents. So there's always like connections. It's just one big happy family. It makes you feel like you're in a barrio. I like my neighborhood. Substance use, gang activity, lack of sex education, and other community risk factors can impact how teens perceive their future and increase their risk for teen pregnancy. YLT members talk about the challenges teens face in their communities. What I've seen, a lot of kids sell sell a lot of drugs. Droga, drugs. Drugs and, 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 and doing things that they shouldn't be doing. You know, it's not safe for a kid to walk at night because there's always somebody either fighting or there's always either something going on, stabbing, shooting. You know, they used to, like, when Hartford High, when I first started, it was either when you were Puerto Rican, you were either with this gang or you were with this gang. So I had cousins in one gang, so I was like, you know, I want to be safe. So I, I stood with that part. But once I started, you know, going to their events and seeing what they did to other people, like, I seen a few things that, you know, I'm not proud of. So I know I left. I had a lot of friends that got pregnant. Some of them were like close friends, best friends. I come from the cycle of teen pregnancy. My mother was one, my grandmother was one. You know, I thought I broke the cycle being, being 17 at my mom's age two years ago. And you know, I was like, oh, I don't got a kid. I don't got a stress. But I realized my friends are going through the same cycle too, being teen mom. So it's like, there's two sides. Like me, I think it's wrong at this age to have a child, but there's other teens that just go out and have a child and it's fine to them. Teens are like scared to talk to their mom because they don't know what they're gonna say, so they just, well, they don't, they don't want to tell anybody because they don't want to get judged by it. Like a lot of girls are just out there and their parents don't care what they're doing. 
because some parents it is hard for them to talk about it because it's probably their parents didn't really talk to them about it so they had to learn by themselves um because their parents are not talking about um, like sex to them so they really don't know so they just do it to find out and then just they end up pregnant they become pregnant because they don't know about their bodies Communities that support their teens can potentially reduce teen pregnancy. Additionally, trusted adults can influence the lives of teens and the decisions they make. YLT members discuss gaps for teens in their communities and speak about adults whom they trust. I want kids to be safe and be able to walk at night and be able to walk from school without thinking, oh my God, what's going to happen to me? As females, like we need to be supported in certain types of ways because like, if we get pregnant, the guy, it's like, he takes it easy to walk off. We need more teen programs. Programs where there are people just motivating them, you know, while they're in school to keep themselves on track. Teens need that push and that program and people for them. Just to inform them more as much as we can. And it has to be fun so that way they're actually paying attention, but they're getting something out of it at the same time. Being a teen and having a leadership role is very impactful and very powerful because I always end up listening to my friends or, or vice versa. So I feel like if we have more youth taking on a leadership role and we continue that cycle instead of a teen pregnancy cycle, it will go from there. More support, I guess, from like adults. I mean, that support looks like, like an adult that'll be there whenever like they need it, you know, to be able to talk to comfortably, like, like somebody you could just go to and talk about your problems and like so they could help you and give you like advice to what to do in life. And some teens don't have that. Like their parents won't be there for them, you know, and they try to look for it. And when they're looking for it, they're looking for it in the wrong place. And with a teen program, they would look for it in the right place with a positive adult that is going to have a positive outcome in their life. I wish there was more of a leadership from an adult perspective, more so. Like, I wish the mayor would come more often into the community. I wish there was all the other adults from who live in downtown Hartford who show their presence constantly in our local community to show, hey, you're not alone, we're here for you. I feel like a lot of teenagers don't realize how serious things are unless someone that experienced it all was to talk to them. It's like we have to have parents that are comfortable talking about it, talk to other parents. Because if we try to talk to our parents about sex, it's not, I'm not saying it's every everyone, but if you kind of talk to your parents about sex, they're gonna think that, oh, you are having sex, and then it's like things go down instead of up. Teens really need someone to be like, I don't like what you're doing, I don't like, where you going you need to go through here you need to go through this path like we really need teens really need someone to look up to and to tell them i love you i got love for you and you need to do what you need to do and you need to go through this path instead of going through that path and just you know that presence makes us feel even better teens who are supported at home at school and throughout their communities are more likely to make informed decisions about their sexual and reproductive health ylt members describe how they are supported in their communities and talk about their hopes and dreams for the future. My mom was in my life, like, physically, but on the phone, I talk to her every night, but I see her as a hero because she had kids at a young age, and me and my older sister, we broke the cycle. My grandparents, my grandparents and my mother, I remember my grandma turned 18 and we had a party, and she took me outside, and she don't speak English like that, but she grabbed both my wrists, and she said, wherever you go, take me with you. We couldn't go there, but we could go there with you. We have conversations. She's like, don't get pregnant. I don't want to be a grandmother right now. It's like she believed that her kids are capable of things that she's not capable of. Uh, well, my mother, she was a teen mom at 16, and she had to drop out of high school. She's She was from Puerto Rico, and she always wanted to graduate, but she had to drop out because during that time it was difficult and to go to school and maintain a child. And seeing how she had to give up her goals and dreams in order to maintain us like really impacted me. So my thing was, I want to break the cycle for us as minorities. So we know that we don't have the same struggles and we could be something better than what we are now. And seeing how over the years, the cycle has continued in my family and my local community. I was like, you know, it's time to break the cycle. And 
Knock on wood, I'm 18 years old, not pregnant, going to University of Vermont. Well, I know me personally, being from the cycle, I'm going, I'm, I'm furthering my education and become a physician's assistant and hopefully open up my own clinic so I could be there for the young, the young Latinos and Latinas and show them that I'm a minority too. I broke the cycle and you can too. My goals and dreams is to ultimately be successful. Like, I want to be either a volleyball player or a basketball player. And if sports doesn't work out, I want to at least have a degree in something, like yeah. my master's. My first goal was to graduate high school. I did that. Now I was going to go to college, get my citizenship, and bring my mom here, because she's in Guyana, and live in a big, nice house with kids. To go see other places, go to college and graduate, and have my name known out there for good reasons. I want to travel the world and I want to come back to Holyoke and at least one day make it as mayor of Holyoke and change everything and give back to my community where I grew up. Community risk factors can impact how teens perceive their future and influence their sexual decision making and behavior. Teens can benefit from surroundings that provide opportunities, support, and other protective factors. Trusted adults influence the lives of teens and the decisions they make and help to reduce teen pregnancy. Where youth live, learn, work, and play matters. Community members play an important role in teen pregnancy prevention by identifying and addressing social determinants influencing teen pregnancy in their communities, supporting sexual health education that includes the proper use of condoms and effective methods of birth control, encouraging open communication about sexual health, supporting teen-friendly clinical services, engaging teens in conversations about teen pregnancy prevention, and creating opportunities within their community for youth to realize their hopes and dreams.